We're always hearing about the desperate plight of Africa's wildlife, especially the elephants and rhinos that are so cruelly hunted down for their tusks and horns. For most of us, all we can do is sound concerned and maybe hand over a few coins to a wildlife charity. But I've just met an Aussie guy who's actually out there making a difference. Damien Manda is a kind of conservation Rambo, a former commando who's using his expertise to save Zimbabwe's big animals. Now it's the poachers who are finding out what it feels like to be hunted. Being this close to a black rhino is a little unsettling, and yet an incredible thrill. Because an encounter like this is increasingly rare. Tragically, these remarkable creatures have been hunted to the brink of extinction for their iconic horns. And the poachers would take both horns, would they? Yeah. The front and back? Yeah. They would just hack the whole front of the face off. Here in Zimbabwe, we've joined the front line of a war. A dangerous cat and mouse conflict between the rhino poachers and a dedicated team intent on stopping the slaughter. And in the midst of this battle, you'll find a true eco-warrior, Australian commando, Damien Manda. Can you really make a difference? Mate, we are making a difference, and it's fantastic. But how do you know that? Because we're seeing the results on the ground. We're getting arrests, and we're preserving wildlife. Strike! <laughs> Strike! Damien has brought Strike! years of military expertise Strike! to his new mission, creating hardcore anti-poaching units. Highly skilled <laughs> rangers trained in self-defense, tactical response, and weapons. Straight up, bang, he's down, you're off. If it looks no intimidating, hesitation. it's meant to. Freeze! Freeze! That bone! Damien is facing an enemy of armed and desperate yeah, men, prepared to kill for profit. And that includes anyone who stands in their way. Are the poachers you're coming across well armed? Yeah, we are. The guys we caught uh, here the other week, AK 47s. These guys going out, your blokes going out with semi-automatic shotguns, are they enough? Yeah, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Yeah. When I first met him I thought, oh yeah, this is an Australian, you know. <laughs> um, and I thought, yeah, here comes a Rambo, an African Rambo, an Aussie Rambo in Africa. And I think we can really, well, we, I think we need somebody like that. Somebody who's prepared to get out there. Um, and get their hands dirty get their hands dirty and get involved. Charlene Hewitt has been fighting for the rhino and all Africa's wildlife for decades. But times have never been so desperate, and that means desperate measures. Today, we're hunting down the rhinos to get to their horns before the poachers can. A big male has been hit with a tranquilizer dart, and we've got to reach him quickly to make sure he doesn't do damage to himself or us. Rifle! Rifle! Is he ready to get away? He rolls! Okay, blindfold him! Blindfold! This is the cause of the problem. And perversely, to keep this magnificent animal alive, it's got to come off. Because the poachers are desperate to get their hands on this to sell it into the Asian black market. A horn of this size is worth more than $100,000. And that is the only reason that there's only 2,500 of these black rhinos left in the world today. It's come to this to try to save it. Like a giant fingernail, the horn consists of keratin and the rhino feels no pain. Poachers take no such care, killing every rhino they find. The horn will slowly grow back, but right now this is one rhino that's worthless to them. That, that's a fair bit of weight in there. Yeah, about four, four kilo, mate. So yeah, about a hundred grand. And you can understand, with that sort of money, the motivation is enormous, isn't it? Mate, it is. It's, and, I mean, it's like sitting on a bloody reserve bank here with not enough guards. You know, so it's, it's, it's quite stressful, mate. This is the prize, mate. This is what they're after. This is what causes me sleepless nights. 
The illegal trafficking of wildlife is now the third biggest criminal industry in the world. And although its value as a medicine and aphrodisiac has been proven false, demand for rhino horn is so insatiable, so deadly, even the calves must lose their horns. The size of that horn, yeah. as tiny as it is, yeah. on this 15 month old still has to come off. Yeah mate, the stuff's worth more than gold, so they've got no hesitation killing an animal this young and this small, just to cut that small stub off the front there. That's the that's mentality you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Just like the other four rhinos dehorned today, this calf is quickly back on its feet. But for Damien and his team, these small victories are bittersweet. To protect these rhinos, they must disfigure the very feature that defines them. It's just so unnatural. I mean, we have to, it comes to this to save our wildlife. Well, it's better this than then I'm going to pull the blood, eh? Yeah, that's sad. That's sad. I'm not sad. I'm angry. <laughs> Filthy. The trouble is, it's, you know, it's desperate measures to, yeah, try and to that, save a desperate situation. And that's what it's come to now, unfortunately. And yeah, we're prepared to do it, I think. Yeah, there's a group of us that have come together and we're going to take action, aren't we? <laughs> Damien Manda has become a shining star of the cause. But diamonds don't come much rougher or tougher. A Sydney publican's son with a taste for danger, he first trained as a Navy clearance diver, then a commander, before spending three years in Iraq, where he ended as an advisor to the Iraqi police. At the start of 2009, he was ready for a fresh challenge, and Africa beckoned. Particularly Africa or just... No, nah, yeah, Africa, you know, you just... I probably read too much Wilbur Smith as a kid, you know. And to be fair, I came over for the adventure, you know. I thought, F awesome, you know. I've come over and, and, and throw me hat in the ring. I've got all this experience now from, you know, Australian military and, and in Iraq, and I, I can really make a difference. Come on, like you mean it, strike! This was no strike. hollow whim. Damien sold strike. just about everything he owned and invested a quarter of a million dollars to create the International Anti-Poaching Foundation. His plans for an anti-poaching army might sound ambitious, but nowhere is it more needed than strife-torn Zimbabwe. Two, three, four. Our wildlife is being poached at a phenomenal rate. And really what we need to do is set up anti-poaching units. And I think Damien has got the expertise. So it really is the here and now. It's, it's that critical. We have to do something now because tomorrow's going to be too late. When you told your family and your mates back home that you were selling up everything you had and moving to Africa, did they think you'd had too much sun? My mum was happy to see me out of Iraq, to be honest. Yeah. She was pushing me, going, yeah, yeah, Zim's good. Yeah. Anything but Iraq. <laughs> yeah. It may not be Iraq, but manning Zimbabwe's thin green line can be just as deadly. It's legal to shoot poachers on sight. So the stakes are high as we set out to track them. Dying is not on my list of things to do today, but you know, if you ask if I'm willing to die for the struggle, then the answer is yes. We move quietly, looking for signs of poachers. Head tracker Elliot soon discovers one of the main tools of the trade, a wire snare opens up and just becomes a big noose. So the thing is, it's like a landmine. Unless you disarm it, it stays there. What's it meant to catch? Mate, it's indiscriminate, so it can catch anything. It can catch uh, a wild dog this big or get caught around the leg of an elephant, so it's completely indiscriminate. Soon, we come face to face with the carnage snares can cause. A beautiful male impala, not long dead. Shit pisses me off, eh? The trap is part of a snare line set within the last day or so. Are you going to set that off? No, we're just going to we're going to disarm it, and uh, we're going to ambush this site later. 
Try and wait for the poachers to come back. Yeah. So now, the hunters become the hunted. An hour before sunset, Damien's team head back into the site to lay an ambush. Surprise and patience are critical. The rangers must watch and wait. The hunch is the poachers will come back either at sunset or sunrise. later, Elliot signals contact. It's on. Busted. Down. Face down. Face down. down. Face down. 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 Face down. 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 This is what Damien's training is all about. Face down. down. Armed poachers taken down without a shot fired. The two arrests make a total of nine in just a month. Nine. They confess to killing seven animals on this hunt. A shotgun for their own protection and in case they come across a black rhino. All this in a private game reserve. This is a problem right across the country, right across the region. So it's a real battle, isn't it? These guys will go to where they think the easiest kill is. You know, if they think this is the easiest kill, then I hate to think what's going on in the other areas. You've got ten men in a relatively confined space. Yeah. The national parks must just be a nightmare. Yeah, screaming for help. Let's go. Good ambush, Liam. Good stuff, mate. <laughs> you did well. <laughs> Damien dreams his band of brothers will soon run into the thousands. With money he doesn't yet have, he has plans for five regional training academies. A green militia running down the Zambezi River, protecting the wildlife of Botswana, Namibia, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. Well, what happens if none of this works? That's not an option, mate. Yeah. You got a spare room at your joint? <laughs> Home and family are never far from mind. But for Damien, this is a tour of duty unlike any other. And he's here until the war is won. Yeah, you know, I'd love nothing more than to go home every Sunday and have a roast with the oldies or crack a cold one with the boys after work. But, um, you know, th th this is where the job needs to be done and this is what we're doing. So, you know, you can't really put a value on, on those sort of sacrifices. But, you know, I, I haven't got much in the bank, but I've never felt richer. Coming up. What is it like to come back to Salt Creek? I still remember when it happened. Evil beyond compare. Why, Dad? Why? The Salt Creek monster. Oh my God! He wants to kill us. Was jailed for terrorising two backpackers. Had to fight to survive. But that hasn't stopped him wreaking havoc. And I got told to watch my back. Now he's targeting his own daughter. I'm really scared that Dad's going to come after me when he gets out. I'm really scared. 